Hello and welcome, this is Randy with Excel for Freelancers. We have something special for you this week. We've got a mobile inventory manager with the conjunction of AppSheet, which is a mobile development application. This is gonna allow us to sync automatically our inventory from a mobile device. Our mobile phone will be able to add, update, delete information both ways and sync it to Excel. It's gonna be an amazing training. I can't wait, so let's get started. <laughs> All right, thanks so much for joining us this week. We've got a brand new training. Maybe it's gonna be a series depending upon your feedback. In this particular training, what I really wanna do is bring in the mobile phone technology everybody's got a phone we all use our phone I want to be able to add update delete inventory items with our phone and I want that to sync automatically to Excel and of course any changes that we make in our application here I want it to update on our phones as well Excel in itself doesn't work very well on our phone because it doesn't allow macros but we've got some amazing applications that can help us and I'm gonna teach you how to create your own brand new application right on your phone and sync it with Excel today. So I can't wait to get started on that. Also, this is, could be a continuing series, so I'm really gonna ask for your feedback, your ideas, your comments on this training. There's so much more we can do, but I don't know what direction you wanna go in. Let me know in the comments. I can add on to this inventory manager. I can create additional applications and lots of other things. So there's really so many directions I can go in, but I'm gonna use your advice, your comments, your feedback to know which way I can go in. All right, before we get started, let's take care of some business. If, of course, you have not yet subscribed, please do so. I create these brand new training videos each and every Tuesday just for you, so I want you to be notified right away when I create those. To do that, go ahead and subscribe to our channel and make sure you click the notifications bell. Also, I've got some amazing, really incredible products and courses. In fact, the Advanced Excel Dashboard Masterclass is extremely popular. So many freelancers are taking this course and getting great jobs, freelance jobs from it or creating their own products. So if you have not yet enrolled, I'm currently offering $50 off coupon. I don't know how long that's gonna be available. So make sure you join us over over at the Excel for Freelancers Dashboard Masterclass. If you do also wanna become an expert on Excel, there is no better way to do that than with our ultimate Excel resource guide. I've got over 1,000 resources, including 100 PDF downloads, 100 Excel applications, utilities, 100 Excel Facebook groups, and tons and tons more. Also, you can download any of these workbooks for free using the links in the description, but if you wanna get all 100, in fact, I've got now over 100, that's just a little secret between you and me, there's well over 100 in there. You can get that for just $37. So I'll include all the links down below. I appreciate that, that helps keep these trainings free and comprehensive each and every week. I don't give you five or 10 or 15 minute trainings. I usually try to give you a full hour of training each and every week. I wanna bring you something special. All right, let's get started on this. So we are going to use a product called App Sheet. It's an amazing, it is free to try. In fact, up to 10 users. Let's take a look at App Sheet. This is called App Sheet. It's called the Intelligent No Code Platform. It's a great platform. It allows you to create applications on your phone. I have personally barely touched the surface of this application. There's a lot I don't know. I'm just learning this, but we're going to start out with a sample and get started and I'll show you the basics on that, but I urge you to check it out. It's a pretty incredible application. So if you look at the pricing, the pricing is per user, but up to 10 users for absolutely free. So for our purposes here, we're going to we can use it for free. So the first thing you want to do is get an account and you'll want to log in. I've already logged into this account, but what you'll do is you'll want to log in and once you do, you wanna connect your Dropbox account. Let's take a look at that. I'm gonna sign out here, and then I'm gonna sign back in, and I'm gonna use my Dropbox account. So when you're home here, so when you click on the app and you wanna start for free or log in, start free, make sure you click on the Dropbox, right? Because we're gonna be syncing with Dropbox. Now you can use 
any of these they're all gonna work you can use as long as you have the shared folder we need to sync with the shared folder so I think Dropbox uh, OneDrive would work Google Sheets would work box would work sales probably work but we're gonna use Dropbox for our purpose. it's one of the easiest so we're gonna sign on with Dropbox that I already have it's gonna connect to my account I've already logged in so since I've already logged in we're gonna go start with a sample app that's easiest and I'm gonna call it sample inventory app because I want to create an inventory and there's so many different kinds of applications you should really check this out we're gonna start with uh, inventory manager and what we'll do is we'll go down here and we'll try this inventory management application and as soon as we do that it's gonna go and set it up and once it's done setting up we're gonna see that we automatically have a brand new app just like on our phone and here's the sample here right here this is what it would look like on your phone to add a new one you would click the plus and you'll be able to add brand new ones uh, I inventories we see information about inventory there's lots of views so here we have our app a lotion we have some sample products here now what I want to do is I want to get that into Excel to get it into Excel we're gonna use our Dropbox and that's what we've signed up with now since I've already connected my Dropbox account a folder has automatically been created so if you look into my file Explorer here we see that I have Dropbox app sheet app sheets automatically been created as a folder and then I have a data and inside this data folder I have what's called sample inventory app that is the one that's just been created inside that folder you're gonna see all the pictures of the products that I have and you can also see an inventory list file if we open this Excel file up and that's gonna open in 2016 I've got multiple versions we'll see it's just a very simple table that consists of name category image available time check and basically some data in a very normal looking table the data starts on row 2 and ends on row 21 so that's our inventory list and it includes an image and this is the name of the image or or picture file that's going to be important of course that also matches the name here for each image it's matched we also have some information under content and this is helps for a report this is going to be a body of a report I haven't gotten into detail much detail but it's super powerful there's so much we can do with that so we've got uh, this is a low stock I think you can use this for an email and it automatically sends out have not even got into this but it can be really really powerful I'm super impressed by this application okay so that's what that is so now you see into a Dropbox so now what I want to do is I want to connect my application with this list and these pictures so that we can sync it so back into our application here's the application I built and I'm going to show you every step everything I did but real quickly what I want to do is I want to connect the inventory list to our application I want to browse for it and I want to know exactly where this list is of course it's right in here we're going to browse for it so I'm going to copy that that's where I want to browse for it because I want that inventory list in our application I need to know where it's located so when we click browse we're just going to actually it's already here all I'm gonna do is connect that inventory list here connect it and I also do want to do one more step I want to know where the, the entire application folder is and that's also pretty simple that is right here into sample inventory app we want to browse for that because I want to know where all those pictures are stored that's all we need to do and if you'll notice here there's no there's a drop down list there's nothing available here there's inventory data there's nothing here but I'm gonna I've written a macro already and all we need to do is click sync application data it's gonna sync automatically and once we've synced all the app all we do is get out of the new screen and we see that every picture is now in here all the data is now in here it's that simple I'm gonna show you exactly how we did that and of course if we want to update the item it works both ways so let's say we want to add a new item just put in a brand new item name like test new item and we can give it a category as like just say grocery and 10 available we'll leave uh, some of the other information let's say 12 o'clock and barcode is fine and we'll set a unit price of five dollars value of 10 reorg point 10 okay so that's enough and we'll go ahead and add a picture just clicking on the browse we'll be able to add a picture this baby crying should be fine and then all we need to do is save the item and now the item has been saved and updated we just have to go back to our 
application here, refresh the screen, and we're gonna see that that brand new product has been added on our mobile phones. So we'll let it refresh here, scroll down, and we will see that our baby here, test new item, is right here inside our mobile phone application. So it's gonna be great. Let's see, we see everything here, our groceries category here, we are available, barcode, everything is here in our mobile phone and i can't wait let me show you exactly how we did that all right it's actually relatively simple it's not difficult it's just two database all we're going to be doing is taking our data in here in our current local file and syncing it with our database right here in inventory once this data is updated in this inventory list this is the item we just added test new it's also going to be synced so for example if i'm going to change that right here to let's say 15 and let's say i changed the uh, type to let's say baby milk changes here inside this we're going to save it and close it automatically changes here are going to be reflected inside our app so understand that as soon as we make a change and then of course refresh it i believe there's probably a better way to refresh that here those changes are going to take effect in our application so the idea is to get the information into that particular app so we can see here now the reorder points been 15 and we see that the category is now baby milk so the idea is to make sure that we update that local file. As soon as that's updated, it is automatically updated in our application on your phone. As soon as you download this and put it on, install it on your phone, it's gonna be updated there as well. So it's a sync both directions, both from the app to Excel, from Excel to the app. And that's what we're going to show you. So the idea is we always wanna make sure that everything is synced. This table inventory list is always synced with this table right here. So that's the idea. So when we add something, when I add a new item, I'm gonna take the information from here and put it and push it into the inventory list. When in information has been inside, the new information is added to the inventory list, it's gotta be pushed back in here. Let's do the opposite on our, on our application. Here we've got our application and let's add a new item from here so we can see how it works both ways sticking with our baby let's say we have baby shirt and we're going to put again in we can do let's say baby milk we'll use the same categories although it's not baby milk let's choose an image for that we'll take a look at the images here and i've got something here let's just put that anything will be a little bit work okay so we've given it image i think there's some required here's our image and uh, we we do have some required fields in here so we're going to tab through it add some information here add a reorder point and the time of day just put some numbers in here because these are all required the date is not required time checked and we're going to save that app now as soon as we save it now that we have let's let's confirm that it is here we'll take a look scroll up to see where it is here it is right here baby shirt here so we've got it in our app but i want to put it back in excel now how do we do that inventory control screen what i'm going to do is sync app data we're going to run a macro i'm going to go through that with you real quick in a moment so now that we have that let's take a look at here at our baby shirt here it's here automatically in excel pretty cool right sync both directions let me show you how we did that all right back into this application we're going to get into the developers and go over all the macros that take this particular application and give it all the power and control you've seen something similar to this but we've never synced it with a mobile application so i'm going to do that for you right now into the developers tab let's focus on a few different macros first the first thing you'll notice we had a few browse for file max so we're going to focus on this module here these are relatively simple we have three browse i'm going to browse for the inventory list this is a file i'm looking for an excel file when i click there i'm looking for a specific excel file you see excel file i want to look for that that is what we're looking on so when we look into this sample let's pull this up here under Dropbox, remember app sheet, data, and then sample inventory. We're looking for this, Excel files only. That's the one I wanna to browse to. So we're gonna put a filter of Excel files. So let's take a look at that one in there. If we right click this button, click assign macro, we will see that the macro that's been assigned is called browse for 
inventory list, browse for inventory. So that's the macro that we're gonna be focused on. Back inside the module, we'll see that we have a macro in our module called browse file max here. We have a macro called browse inventory list. We're gonna dimension inventory files a file dialog. File dialog is our that little pop-up that's gonna ask us whether we wanna browse for a specific file or a specific folder. In this case, I want it browse for a specific file. So we're going to set the inventory file to application file dialog and then this is going to be a file picker, file picker. In another way, in sometimes we only want a folder, right? If we only want to browse for a folder, then it would be something like folder picker. But in this case it's file picker. So with sheet 1, we're going to focus just on sheet 1 for this particular macro and with inventory with the inventory file that's the variable that I've assigned as the file dog I'm gonna set a few things the title we're gonna set it to select inventory list and then filters I only want one type of filter and that's XLSX so that's the file it's gonna be an Excel file and that's the only one that I want if the user has not selected an item we need to tell it to skip this step so if they've not selected which would result in a negative one we're going to go to no selection which is going to skip this step and go right here assuming that of course they have selected it i want to put that entire selection the entire path of what they've selected into k3 that's going to put us the entire path that is this right here so if we look in the formula bar here we'll see that the entire path of that file is right there. That's what I want. Now when it comes to the folder, I only want the location of the folder. That's our application. So when we right click this browse and we go assign macro, we'll see a different macro has been assigned to this one. In this case, it's called browse app location, browse app location. Let's go through that macro, although it's very similar if you've followed my videos. It's very similar. We're gonna we're going again. This time it's gonna be app folder as the file dialog. And we're gonna set the app folder as application file dialog MSO file dialog folder picker. This one's a folder. All I want to know is the folder. I don't want to select any specific file. There's no filters on this because we're just selecting a folder. So we're gonna give it a title called select the app folder select the app folder again if the user has not made a selection we're going to skip this step but assuming that they have selected an appropriate folder I want to put the entire file path of that folder in k4 now keep that in mind k4 is where it's going to go so that's all that we have k4 if we look back into it k4 is right here and that entire path of the folder is going to be right here. That's going to tell Excel where all those pictures are stored. Because when we add a picture or when we pull a picture, I need to know where it's coming from. So we need to know where bread is. Where's the picture of bread? It's going to come from that folder. Coming from this folder right here. This is the folder. We need to know to tell Excel where to look for this picture of the bread. We have the name of it because the name is located inside the database under name. We know the name, but I need to know the folder. So adding that is gonna tell us exactly where. And of course, any pictures that we add, we need to know what folder to add them into. Now notice that the when we added it through the app, it added it to a different folder. That's okay because the name of it consistent in the inventory the name is going to include the folder how is that possible there's two different folders let me show you how so also when we click inventory data we see now the test new item the one that we've added for the baby it included a folder called inventory images it included the folder so the full file path includes the embedded folder that's in so that'll work also as long as we have the folder that it's in part of the name it's fine so that's going to work great for us okay so back into that so we know how we browse for the inventory list and we browse for the application location we've covered that one more browser i want to know we need to browse for the picture when we set the browse for the picture i need to know if we we're going to change a picture or do something else we need to update that accordingly so for example if we take our inventory and we update the photo for this and I want to update it we are going to browse for that and then we will change it up and we can select on a different image add the picture files here so we have different and we want to give it a different type of icon or image we can so that's going to change and make sure that we of course update the item and that's going to update it both in our local and the remote database so now 
When we go back into R, we see we have not refreshed yet. It's bread, but we haven't refreshed yet. Once we refresh it, we're going to see the updated picture for that bread as well. We're going to see it's going to change that picture to bread. So the update works both ways. So you see now bread has the 100. So it works both ways. So I'm going to show that to you because it syncs with both of those tables. Okay, so how do we get this macro? If we take a look at this macro, cancel out of that, right click, click assign macro and we see the macro is called browse item picture that's the macro we're going to show you right now right here browse item pick first thing I want to do is uh, dimension the pick file as a file dialog file dialog we're focused on that because we're focused on a file and then the application I need to know where to store those pictures we're going to put those in the app location and that's going to be a string because we're going to get the full file path of that we also want to make sure that K4 is not empty. K4 is where our folder is located. That is the folder where all of our applications, we can't make sure that's not empty because we need to know where to put the picture. So we need to make sure that that is the full file path of where we're going to put the picture exists. So if K4 is empty, that's going to be a problem. So we got to have it. If K4 is empty, of course, we're going to give a message box saying, please set an application location before adding an item picture. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to instruct the user to run this macro called Browse Application Location. That's right up here. Just going to run the macro that lets them know to select a specific folder where the application is going. Then if we're going to give them one more chance. If K4 is still empty, then exit the sub. Okay, We've given them a chance. We're going to exit out if it's still empty. Assuming it's not empty, we can continue on with the particular macro we can set the application to whatever is in k4 that's going to assign the application location to a variable that variable is going to come in handy now we can set the picture file now we're ready to set the picture file to an application file dialog file picture we're looking for a particular file a picture file and we can set a title when we say with the picture file we'll set a title of select an item picture and then the filters add all picture files that's the name of it right so when we click that macro it's gonna have a name if we click that you'll see there's a name right here select an item picture see that title right here that name is where we signed it in VBA if we change it it's gonna change it up here also if you see these specific filters all picture files and then we've given all picture files that also comes in the macro right here all picture files and then all those pictures so we can see how the code that we write transfers automatically into that pop-up and then the next line of code again if the user has not made any selection we're gonna skip everything and go all the way down to here so we don't want anything to happen if they haven't made any selection next up I want to put that file name into K cell but I only want the file name I don't want the full file path and I want to put it right here I want to put that file name so if we have a full file path but we only want the file name how do we extract that well we can use the directory command in VBA and that's just what I've done so the select the item this is the full file path here right but I don't want the full file path I only want the file name how do we get that we use the directory the command the directory command will extract just the file name from a full file path and so I can take that file name just the file name and put it into k6 under sheet one why did I rec if I have sheet one up here why did I notate sheet one down here because this is with picture file so we're inside another with so I need to denote that and make sure that we've specified sheet one because here this with focuses on the picture file so we need to specify sheet one because we're inside another with statement next thing I want to do is I want to copy the picture I don't want to I want to copy the picture from its original location which is selected items this is the full file path of the original location and I want to place that picture copy that into the application file and I want to take it from remember if we look if we remember correctly that original location was right here into images so let's view that so we can see the thumbnails on here we'll see that that image location was right here the original location was in my images but I wanted to paste it right 
inside here our application location right here i want to paste it so i want to copy that that icon and put it into our location how do we copy it from one location to another well we do that with just one line of code and that line of code is called file copy file copy and all all that is is simply the ability that is the original location comma the new location that's how you copy a file so what is the new location well of course it's our application location plus we are going to add a slash to that max slash to that and the name of the file the name of the file well i only want again i only want the name so i'm going to use directory once again to extract only the name so when we combine all three of those we get a full file path for the destination of where we're going to copy it so again the file copy is the original location then the comma the destination that's how that's a simple line how you copy one file from one location into another location that's how and then all we're going to do is run a macro called display thumb i'm going to go over that for a minute that is going to give us a display our thumbnail right here so because i want it displayed right here at a specific size and i want it displayed right here so that's how we do that once we browse for it we display it so if we were to do it again browse for it change it to a different icon i want that macro displayed when we click update it's going to update both the local and the remote database automatically okay great so we've got that down we know how we're going to be browsed for these photos and let's go into some of the macros that run this application how do we update how do we add new well i've created some buttons as i did i've done this so many times with you but for new people i want you to see i've created a button set these are simple shapes and simple icons and i've combined them into groups that's all i've done here then what i did is i took these shape these individual shapes here and i've grouped them together into two different groups why two different groups well i have one group of buttons the update item the add new and the delete item three buttons into a single group and i'm calling this group existing item group existing why is it existing item group because i'm going to use this group of three buttons for group for items that are existing see this is already a, not a new item but what if it's a new item that's going to be a different group when we click add new we will see that we now have something called save item. make that a little bit bigger save item and cancel new this particular group of two buttons is called new item group and i want this particular button set displayed only for new items this gives the user the ability to either have two choices to cancel out of the new which is going to select the first available item or it they're going to have the ability to save it so they have choices so i want a certain button set i want this button set displayed for existing items and I want this button set displayed for new items. That's very important. Okay, so basically we're gonna hide and display these specific button sets based on some settings. Let's go over some of the macros that help run this, help update and save, add new or delete or cancel new. I'm gonna go over these individual macros now. So we go back into the VBA, we'll take a look at a module called item load macro. Inside this module, we have multiple macros. We have item save and update, we have item new, we have item cancel new item delete so let's take a look at some of those and i believe there's one more i just skipped item save and update and of course display thumbnails and item loads we have a four or five different macros let's go over them the first thing is item load how do i get the item to load when i change make a change here i want that item to load I want that information to load automatically. So when we make a change to E6, we want something to happen, right? That would be a worksheet change event, meaning we make a change to a specific cell, we want something to happen, we want a macro to run. How do we get that? Well, when we go back into the developers and we look at sheet one inventory, we have just one little bit of code here. It's called a worksheet change event, meaning user has made a change to the worksheet this is if the user count large we just put this in as protection if they make changes to a lot of cells at one time then it's going to exit out that could provide an error if they do that but this specific line of code prevents against errors so you may see that on worksheet change you may also see that on selection change the code we're going to be focusing on is right here if not intersect range e6 is nothing what does that mean that all that that means is if the user has made a change to e6 nothing 
and not cancel each other out. So when you see two negatives like that, a double negative, you can ignore both of them. And that basically means if the user makes a change to E6, then do something. And one more thing, and E6 does not equal empty. I wanna make sure that the user has entered a value. For example, when we click add new, when we click add new, we clear all of those out. Right? When we click add new, it gets cleared out. You see, there was a change to E6, right? But I don't want to run this macro if the type of change means clearing it out. I only want the type of change when they particularly make a specific change to that. So that's very new. We're in the new field. So I want to make sure that when they make a change, it is the change that they're actually there's actually a value here. So we want to make sure it's not blank. So and E6 does not equal empty. And one more and B4 equals false. I think I'm going to get rid of that. That is only for new items. Let's get rid of that then. Okay, we don't need that. That was only for new items, but this could be for an existing. So now when we have add new and we make a change, it's going to load properly. Okay, we got rid of that. We don't need that false. We don't need so that means on add new items or on existing items, it'll load. Perfect. So the kind of change so when the when there's a delete with there's this blank then it's not going to run so what do we want to happen when we do that well i want to just simply run the macro called item load if i want to find this macro i just click right click define definition here and it's going to go right to that macro this is the macro we're going to focus on item load and item column we need those defined as long item row and item column why do we need that well we need the row and I need the column. What I want to do is I want to take, figure out whatever, for example, if we have selected pain reliever, I need to know that pain reliever is on eight of our database here, eight in our table. Then what I want to do is I want to go through every single cell in this and I want to add all that information to the fields here. We do that using data mapping. If you're familiar with my videos, you've seen this a number of times. Let me show you what data mapping is. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a picture of this screen right here and I'm going to copy it over so you can see exactly what happens. So I'm going to copy that and I'm gonna bring it back into my application. I'm gonna paste it in our table just temporarily, just so we can see that. And we're gonna move it up to row one. If we take a look at row one, we see different cells in there. And those cells denote the cells here. So if we look at pain reliever, right, the item name is located on E6, right, E6. And if we look at the item name here, it's E6. What about the category? The category is located on E8, E8. What about the availability? Availability is located on E10. And if we look here, available, E10. So we see how that these specific cells denote a specific field of where we want that on sheet one. Now we, we've seen this. When you're doing your own mapping, I urge you take a screenshot and paste it right next to the table so you can confirm and make sure you include both the columns and the rows so you can see exactly how that works okay so we can delete this screenshot we don't need that anymore so i've used data mapping so what do i need to do i know the row how do i know the row well let me show you how we're going to look it up we've used a named range item name i've created a brand new named range if we look into formulas name manager in fact just one single named range in this application called item name it's going to be a dynamic named range and we tab over we'll see that it's based on all of the names in that specific column a of sheet two which is our inventory data and it is dynamic so it's going to grow as we add items to this table you will see that this grows using the offset formula and starting at a3 we're starting at the header column why are we starting at the header column and not row four we are starting in case all of the data gets deleted, you will see that there's no error because we start at the header column, but we're going to move one column down. We're going to offset it one row down. That way it starts one row down. So we can use that. We're going to do the same thing when we count and we determine how many rows we should count. We're going to start out with A3 and go elevate A99994 or whatever. And then we're going to subtract one. Why are we subtracting one? Well, because we're starting at the header row. So I need to subtract one. I want to I'm going to count the header row and then subtract one. That is going to get us our dynamic named range accurately. We always know it's accurate. When we tab over it, we'll see that it, the dancing ants are around all of the data accurately. That's exactly what we want.
Now that we have the named range, we see that that named range also starts in row four. So let's say I want to search for avocado and I'm going to use a match, right? I'm going to match avocado. What's it going to return? If I use a match, it's going to return one because it's found in the first row of our named range, right? But our first row of our named range is four. So how do we get four? If it returns one, avocado meaning our first value, we just need to add three. Let me show you what I mean, right? So if we select avocado here at the top, we want it to, I want to know row four. So if we slide over here to our columns, I want to know four. I want this value four. So we can use the match. What are we matching? We're matching E6. That's the avocado. What are, what's the named range? What's the lookup array? That's item name. That's the dynamic named range that I just showed you, the only named range we have in this application. Zero, because we need an exact match. This in itself, right here, this will return one, because it's the first value in our named range. But I don't want one. I want the row number. So we add three. That's going to get us our row number, which is four. So that is going to tell us what row to load all of the information. So as soon as the user enters this and runs the code, it's going to tell us all of the information that's going to run. So as soon as we do that, so then we know. Now, now that I know it's row four, now I know it's row four, I need to know all of the data. So we're going to run a loop from column one all the way to column 11. And we're going to take this, whatever's here in row four, the second column, we're going to put that in E8. Whatever's here in column three, actually, we're going to put that in K6. And again, whatever's here. So it's going to, so that's how we're going to take this 70 and we're going to put it in E10 right here. So that's how we do that. So let's go through the code and see just how it's done in the code. We know our row is on B3. So that's the first thing we want to do. B3 is empty. That's going to be a problem. We've got to have a row. So please select the correct item. We want to make sure that we're actually loading an item. If it's empty, we can't do anything else. B3 is required. Once B3 contains a value, we can assign it to the variable item row. And then the item column is variable because remember, we're going to go through and we're going to load. We don't need to load row one because the item name is already there. Column one contains the item name. So we don't need to load that because the user just put that in. So we only need to load two through 11. So how do we do that? Well, the first thing I need to know is I need to get this cell. What do I need to get? I need to get this cell. Where is this cell located? It is located in the second column of the first row. This is the third column of the first row. This is the fourth column of the first row. So I need to get this value, E8. I need to know that. Then what I want to do is I want to put this into E8. So how do we do that? We do that with just one line of code. So I want to get that E8. Sheet 2 cells, remember, row 1 and the item column. The first one's going to be 2, the second one's going to be 3, and it's going to go all the way to the 11. So this is a cell. This is a cell. Okay. This is a cell. This is sheet one, right? Sheet one. So sheet one, in this case, let's say the first value we're going to go through is EA, the first one. Sheet one, because we're we have with sheet one here, this is E8 right here. Sheet one, E8, E8 equals what? The item row, which is four, the item column, which is two. So sheet one, E8 equals sheet two four, item four, column two value. So let's look at that again. E8 equals row four, column two, groceries. Then we go to the next one. K6 equals row four, column three. So we go through each step by step by step, and that's how we load the information. So it's a quick, quick loop, and that loads up all the information. So once we run this loop right here, it loads up all the information. So it's very, very easy. Next up, I want to hide the, now we know it's, a, it's an existing application. It is an existing item. So we want to show the existing item group. Remember, this is the group of those three shapes these three right here. I want to show this and I want to hide the new one. Remember the new one what was the new one that was this one right here. I want to make sure this one is hidden 
and I want to make sure this one is displayed. So we do that with just these lines of code. Shapes existing item equals MSO true, showing the existing and hiding the new group. And also B4 tells us if it's a new or an existing item. B4 goes to false, meaning it is no longer a new item. B4 keeps track of whether it's a new item or an existing item. False brings it to existing because once it's saved and once it's loaded, we want to make sure that it's loaded. It's going to be not an existing item, of course. All right, moving on. Now we want to display the thumbnail. This is the macro we run. You saw this macro before, but we didn't go through it. So let's go run through this macro. This is called item display thumb thumbnail. And what does it do? That displays this little thumbnail right here. So every time we make a load, we need to reload this picture. So I have a single macro that's going to run this. We also run the same macro every single time we browse for a new picture. So if we put this in YouTube comment, it's going to run automatically also when it's a little bit big. We should control the size of that. I'll update that. But you get the idea. So we have the ability to, so this macro runs both on load or both on uh, browse. So we're going to run that macro either way. Mm, that candy corn looks good. All right, moving on. It reminds me of when I was in Halloween many years ago. Okay, moving on. So let's run this display thumb. We're gonna, we need the application because that's important. That's where our pictures are located. And I also need the picture name. Those are very important and the picture path. So we're gonna define all three of those as strings. With And of course, K4 is where our application folder is. That can't be blank. If it's blank or if K6 is blank, K6, what is that? Let's take a look at that. K6 is our name of the photo. We need to make sure that we have a name because we can't load it without a name. So that's got to be there. We need both values in K4 and K6. Okay, so we need that. If either one of those are empty, we are going to populate a message box, making sure the application and image have been selected, and then we're going to exit out. Just in case there are neither of those, we're going to exit it out. Next up, I want to remove any possible picture, thumbnail picture that might have been there before. So this line of code will delete any picture before. But if there is no picture, it could result in an error. So we have surrounded this and sandwiched it in an on air resume next and on air go to zero. That prevents any pop-up errors in case there was actually no picture present at all. We can set next line of code the application to K4. This is the application folder. We we're familiar with that. The picture name in K4. So we've got those, excuse me, picture name in K6. So we've got those set up. Now we can get the full picture path. The picture path is simply the application plus the picture name and of course adding in a backslash there will give us the full file path of that. We need that path because I need to open it and insert it into our Excel file. We can do that with the next line of code. With the pictures, insert picture path. This is going to insert that picture. And we may want to we may want to control the height and width. Actually, control the width too. That was a little bit big. Notice the height was controlled, but the width is. But that's okay. So we're going to lock the aspect ratio because I want the picture to keep maintain the aspect ratio. We're going to set the height at 85, and we're going to assign it a name. It's very important to assign a name because we need to be able to delete it. Otherwise, if we if we keep the name of it as it is, we could we won't be able to delete it. We don't want too many pictures within our application. So we do need to control it. So we'll set the name always to thumb pick. Next up, now we're ready. We can work with it using the name that we've just assigned with shapes thumb pick. I want to position it according to J7 and J7 on the top and J7 on the left. Then I'm going to increment it 10 below and 10 to the left. What is that? Well, you see here is cell J7 right here, but I don't want it right at the top of J7. If if without that increment 10, it would appear just like that, right? But increment 10 down and 10 to the left is going to place it about right there. So that's why we use increment because I want it placed just a little bit below and just a little bit to the right. So these two lines of code add some pixels to the left and to the right. All right, so that's it. That's all we do to display the thumbnail. You've seen that before, perhaps if you've been following my videos, it's something really common. And now what we want to do is save and update. I'm going to use the same macro for both saving and update. What is that? When I click update, it's going to save it. 
And also when I click add new and click save on them, it's going to be the same macro. So if we right click this button here, click assign macro, we will see that the macro called item save update. When we cancel out of that, we right click on the update, we're going to see the same macro has been assigned item saved a macro what does that mean well that means that we can either save an item or update an item save a new item or update an existing item using the same macro the only differentiation if we're adding new we don't have an item row so because it's not an existing so we need to assign an item row what row would we go to new what would be the first available row on our inventory list in this case 26 otherwise everything is the same so all we need to do really do is assign the row if it's a new item or use the existing row if it's an existing item so we can do that with a few lines of code let's get into the macro and see just how we did that so again say item save the item row is long the item column is long i need to define both of those with sheet one all right if before value is true what is that that means it's a new item because when we click add new, when we click add new, this goes to true. Automatically B4 goes to true. On an existing item, it goes to false. That's how we know it's a new item or not. So we click add new, automatically is true. So we know if B4 is true, we know it's a new item. We're gonna use that. If it's a new item, we're gonna say, okay, if it's a brand new item, make this the first available row, make this the row number. Otherwise, use whatever is in B3. So that is exactly how we do it inside the code. If B4 equals true, then it's a new item. I'm gonna put a little comment here, new item, and I'm gonna put another comment, else existing item, item, okay. So if it's new, then the item row is equal to sheet two, A, nine, 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 N, XL up dot row plus one. This will get us the last row with the value. This adding one will get us the first available row below that. So that's if it's a new, but what if it's an existing? Item row is gonna be equal to whatever is in B3. Then we're gonna run a loop just like we did last time, except this time we are going to include column one because I wanna save that name. So from item from 1 to 11 again we're going to do the reverse here but we're going to do a reverse map and we can use the same mapped cells so what are we doing here what i'm going to do is i'm going to take whatever is in e6 and i'm going to place it here i'm going to take whatever is in e8 and sheet one and i'm going to place it here if it's a new item of course it'll be here if it's an existing item it'll be one of the rows so we're going to use this but we're going to use it in reverse now i'm going to take whatever is in here and place it here previously what i did is i put whatever was in here and put it into E12. So we're gonna use reverse mapping here, and it's very easy. So we can take all of 11 columns in just three lines of code using a four next loop. From the opposite, so now sheet two value equals the item row. We've already defined the item row here, either new or existing. Item row, the item column, of course, that's going to be from 1 to 11. So it's going to be variable going from 1 to 11. So we know our database sheet. This is going to equal, what's it going to equal? Well, it's going to equal that cell. Remember row 1, whatever is in row 1 and the item column, this is going to be our cell address, our cell address right here. That cell address, just, just to go over with you one more time, is going to be here, 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 or here. So we have that cell address, so now we know what to place. And the value, whatever the value is in that cell, is gonna put it in the database. So that's how we take all and save all of our data. And then again, it's very simple. We're gonna take our, make sure that it's now an existing group. We've just saved it, so we know it's existing. We're gonna make sure that group of buttons is visible. And then we're going to make sure that our new group, our two buttons that show add new, or save new and cancel new, are hidden. And we also want to set the new item to false. It's no longer a new item in case it was a new item previously. We want to make sure that B4 goes to false. Also, I want to update. We're going to run a macro called update remote. That's going to update the database. And I'll show you that macro in a moment. What that's going to do is going to take the data that we just updated and it's going to update it right here. Update this inventory list right here. 
that data is going to be updated as well. All right, and then I want to run a little item save message. What is that? That's a fade out message. You may have seen me use those before. I like those because it doesn't allow, doesn't cause the user any issues. When we click cancel new and we click update, you're going to see a little fade out message called item saved. Let's go over that real quick. We've been over it so many times. Fade out messages here. All we're doing is taking a specific shape and fading it out using a timer. Item save message and item delete. You can go over this, but we've been in all that. If we want to find that shape, we're going to click on page layout and we're going to click selection pane and we see that we have item save messages. That is a shape. It gets faded out over time using that macro. I have one for the item delete, if you can see right here, and one for the item save. So I have those two fade out messages that tells the user that something has changed because otherwise they won't really know if it's updated unless they see that item save button. Okay, moving on. So we have those fade out messages. All that does is it run a loop and it changes the transparency as it goes. So I don't want to get too into that because you've seen that before. Just those two macros there. All right, back into the save. So that's the last thing. Now, item new, what are we doing with this macro? This macro is controlled by a specific button. Let's take a look at that. That is this called right add new, right click assign macro and we see that it's called item new that is the macro that's been assigned so with this macro what i want to happen well what i want to happen is to a few things i want to clear all the fields i want to delete any picture that's been associated and i want to make b4 to true so those basically three main things b4 goes to true all the fields get cleared out the image gets cleared out, and of course the button set changes now we have our brand new now I want to show the new item group. I want to show that set. I want to hide the other one. So we're going to do those things inside the macro. Let's go ahead and go over that macro. So again, we're doing that. We're going to clear the contents of the associated cells. We're going to delete any thumbnail picture that may have existed, but we're going to wrap it and sandwich that into on air resume next and on air go to zero in case there was no. Now we're going to display the button sets the existing item this time the existing group is going to be set to false we want to hide that and we want to show the new item group so those button sets get and then again b4 is going to go to true that's going to set the item to true that's all we need to do so it's relatively simple so once we have that what about canceling new canceling new what i want to do well i want to cancel new out but I want to cancel it out only if there's actual data here. And then what I want to do is I want to take whatever is here, the first value in A4, whatever's in A4, assuming that there is a value, and place it right here. What is that going to do? That's going to automatically look, put it back into the existing. So that's what I want to do with cancel new. I want to do just that. I want to take avocado and I want to put it right here. So how do we do that? Well, all I need to do is take A4, check it. To make sure it has a value first and if it does place it right here in e6 so that's just what i did in that line of code so let's take a look at that because once i place it there automatically the macro the load macro will run and it goes back into the existing so let's look at that inside that so first thing i want to do is i want to make sure if it's empty then there's no data at all we can't load it must in other words if it's empty if a4 is empty on sheet two there's no data and if there's no data then it cannot go out of the add new mode it must stay in add new until the user actually adds something so we need to tell the user it must please add data in the inventory data sheet or of course sync it to the mobile data and then exit the sub out Next up, we're going to set sheet one B4 to false. That's going to set the new item to false. And then just that line of code that I told you about, sheet one E6 is equal to sheet two A4. That's going to load the first item to the list and sets it back to the existing item. So that's very, very relatively simple. Just that. So as soon as we do that, as soon as we make a change to E6, if you remember here, as soon as we make a change to E6, it's going to run this macro item load. That's how we get everything to happen because we're making a change to E6. So as soon as we cancel new, that is going to happen. And if you'll see, if we right click assign macro, we'll see that the macro that's been assigned is called item cancel new. Okay, now we understand how we get into cancel new. Let's continue on with our macros. We have item delete now, and there's a few things that I want to focus on here. When we delete an item, I want to make sure that give the user a, an option to get out. So we want to say, if are you sure you want to delete this? If their answer is no, 
then exit the sub. This gives the user the ability to exit out in case it's no. So when I click delete item, let's show you the macro first, assign macro, and then you see item delete. That's the macro that's been assigned to this button. And of course, it's also been assigned to this icon. So when I click item delete, we get this pop-up that says, are you sure you want to delete this item? If we click no, nothing is going to happen. If we click yes, what's going to happen? Well, let's take a look at our app sheet just so we know. We'll see that we have avocado at the top of it so let's delete avocado and see what happens to make sure it gets synced properly delete the item click yes and now it's been deleted okay and now it's gone to the other item and uh, we have other items so now it's been deleted and can't and avocado is no longer on our list here we can see it's no longer it is no longer located here in the inventory but what about in our app it's here but what if we refresh it should disappear now we refresh our app and it's going to be gone from our list as well because our inventory list has also been updated. There it is. It's gone. There is no avocado in this list now. On our mobile phones, it is also gone. So how did we do that? Well, the first thing we want to do is we're going to delete it in the local database. The first thing I want to do is make sure it's deleted here in our current inventory list. And then the next thing I want to do is I want to make sure it's also deleted inside this inventory list. This is the inventory list that is actually synced to our mobile data right here. So I want to make sure that it's also gone from here as well. Keep in mind a few things. I'll show you that in a second because this, this data starts on row two but this data starts on row four. So keep that in mind, they start in different, different rows, so they're not identical duplicates. That's important to keep in mind. All right, let's close out our, our sync to data while we're working with it. There are two different versions of Excel. This is Excel 2016, this is Excel 2010. I work with both, so keep that in mind. That's why they look different. All right, closing that out and getting back into our macro, both, both on our inventory control, now we see here item delete where we do need to define the item row as long because i'm gonna have to delete a specific row so i need to put that into a variable i also need to focus on the invoice data workbook i need to delete it from member i need to delete it from two locations i need to delete it from this particular location here and i also need to delete it from the remote workbook because it's the remote workbook that is synced with our mobile data so we need to define the invoice data workbook as a workbook and the invoice data file path as a string, giving them message box, are you sure you want to delete this? Yes, we went over that. If B3 is empty, we need to make sure that you have selected an item to delete. We need to make sure that B3, B3 is our item row here. If we don't have an item row in B3, there's nothing to delete. So we need to make sure that that contains a value. Okay, moving on. Please make sure you select it. Item row is now we can set that as a variable under B3. Sheet two, item row, and item row, entire row delete. This will delete it on sheet two. We want to delete that row. That will do just that. So it'll take sheet two right here and whatever row that you selected. For example, if we currently have, if we want to delete the pain reliever, we click delete. It's going to take row seven of the inventory data. It's going to delete this entire row. But I also need to delete it from the workbook, right? I need to delete it if we're going to delete it from the, from the remote workbook, which is it is not in row 7. It's actually in row 5 here. And this because it starts in different. So if we're going to delete pain reliever, this one starts on is in 5. Because, of course, this one starts on row 2. The other one starts in row. So keep that in mind that this one is on row 5. I also want to delete it from this workbook in row five. So how do we do that? Well, we can do that with a little bit of code here. So we want to delete the corresponding item in the inventory data file. And of course, our inventory data file map is located in K3. If you remember correctly, K3 is where this file is located. Here's K3. This is the workbook I need to open up delete the row, save it, and close it. That's what I want to do. So we can do that with this code here. We need to make sure that K3 contains a value. As long as it contains a value, we're okay. So if K3 does not equal empty, then we can continue on. The inventory data path is equal to K3. That is the entire path. Just in case it's already open, I need to run a check. So set the invoice data equals workbook the directory invoice data file path. This is going to set the workbook, but this is going to create an error if the workbook is not open. 
So that's good. We, so we got on air. Like, then we know it's not open. If there's an error with that, it's because it's not open. So invoice data workbook, if it's nothing, that means that it has not been opened yet, then we can open it. So what these lines of check, basically what it does is it checks if it opens. If it's open already, it sets it. If it's not open, it opens it and sets it because we don't we, we don't know if it's open or not. So these lines of code double check to make sure it's open. If it's not, it sets it and open it. So we do those two lines of code. Now, once we get to this point, the workbook is already open. Continuing on, now we're ready to the item row. Remember, it's seven in this case. Minus two would be five. Item row minus two. This will delete the entire row in our remote workbook. Then what I want to do is I want to save it. And of course, if you want to close it, you can use this line of code. I didn't want to close it just yet because I wanted to show you so you can see what's going on. But you can also close the work. That's it. Now the remote data is updated. And we can run the update remote data for the mobile. We can update that workbook. Actually, we don't need that macro there. And then item cancel new. What I'm going to do is I want to cancel and I want to run that macro so that whatever is the first item, whatever is the first item now is going to select it and put that in there. I'm going to run that macro so that the deleted item, which was here, is automatically cleared out. Because we don't want the deleted item that's just been deleted to be displayed in the fields here. So running the cancel new automatically will take whatever the first item here is and load it in here, just like it would be like doing this. So cancel new. So let's do that. Let's delete another one down here and uh, let's say string lights and you'll see delete item and click OK and we'll see it automatically going to go back to the first item. In this case, it's lotion now. Lotion is the first item. So it's going to revert back after we delete it. So that's really important. So back into the code, I want to run that macro item cancel new so that it automatically selects the first item in the list. And then automatically, I also want delete item deleted message. I want to run this fade out message so that it alerts the user that the item has been deleted. All right, great. We've gone through item delete. We've gone through item cancel new. Item new, we've done. Item, we're moving along, pushing along, got a lot of macros. Item save and update, item display thumbnail and load. Great, what about the list update, the macros that update? Our, we have some new things now. I wanna do two things. I wanna update the local file and I wanna update the remote. What is the update the local file? What if, there's two ways, remember there's two ways. If the user makes a change from their mobile phone, I need to update the local file file. So let's say I want to run a macro. I'm going to add an item here. Let's say add a new item here and then we'll just call it test item item 3, okay? Give it a give it a category name of seasonal and then give it an image of so there's going to be another one. Let's just give it any image. It doesn't really matter. And then I've given it this a available. Let's add in the required fields barcode so what I want to do is I want to make sure that any changes here are made are automatically reflected. So I need a macro. So what's that going to do? And we're going to click save. So now it's updated. So now I have this brand new item called test. And let's look down here. Here it is right here called test item three with this A. So that is automatically here. Okay, so we just added test item three. Now let's go back into the folder and open up our inventory list. So it's automatically in this list already. So we see test item three in row 20. It's here, it's already here. What do I need to do? Well, I need to get it here. I need to get it right here, the bottom of here. So I need to run a macro that's gonna pull any new items from there and put it down here. So I'm gonna put that up. So we can do that with a macro. First thing we can do is I wanna know something. I wanna know if this modification date, if we look here, we'll see that the modification date is September 26, 2.35 p.m. But when's the last time it was when's the last time it was modified? What if the last time it was the last update was 926 218 p.m. right 218? So I need to make sure that the last update, if this last update is less than the update date, then it's time for an update. That means it's, there's been some sort of a change on this file. So we need to make an update. So we're going to use the date 
modified comparison, if this date modified is greater than what we have here, the last update, it's always, we're always gonna track the last update. If it's greater, in this case it is, then I need to do is I need to update and pull the information from our remote file, which is here, and bring it into our local. We can do that with just a macro, a very simple macro. Let's look at that macro, it's called update Actually, it's this one right here. It's called update local update. We're updating the local file from the remote to the local file. So we've got a few. We're going to the inventory data workbook as a workbook dimension and the inventory data file path as a string. And then the last row as long. We also need to make sure that K3 has our inventory data workbook. That cannot be empty. If it is, we need to exit the sub. The invoice data file path is going to be what's in. That's our remote workbook that connects with our Dropbox and connects with the local app for our remote application. Then on air, we need to open, I wanna open that workbook. These particular lines of code will open the workbook. It'll first check to see if it's open. If it's open, it'll set it. If it's not, it'll open and set the workbook. Now that the workbook has been set to invoice data, we can do some things. We can look at the last row. What is the last row of this workbook? Well, it's the inventory list a9 x11 this is going to tell us what the last row is then what i'm going to do is i'm going to see if the last row is less than two than good and just in case there's no data we need to go out of it it's to me that there is data in that last we can move on then i want to do is i want to update our local so sheet two a4k in the last row plus two last row plus two because remember we're starting on different rows our local copy starts on row four our remote copy starts on row two so they start in different rows so we need to add two on our local copy and what we're going to do is going to take all the data in our remote and bring it over into our local that's going to update our local copy once we're done we can close the remote our remote is right here we're not making any updates all i'm doing is taking this data and bringing it into our local copy and bringing it right into here so you're going to take the data and bring it right in here Just bring those changes in here so that it includes it so we can close it now also sheet one i want to set the update b5 equals now what does that do that automatically updates this date to the current so we know the last update is the current date let's and what i've done also is i've assigned this macro to this button right here so when we right click that button click assign macro and we see that we have the update local update local has been assigned so when we click that sync update it's automatically sync it's done already now when we click our drop down list we'll see test item three is here already and it's already here so all we did is bring that data and bring that all the way in all that remote data and brought it in right here now we have our data here so now it's automatically in so that's the remote data coming into our local and we use one macro to do it one more thing i want to show you before i leave you today and that is the ability to create new items and add it to our remote data remember it's got to go the other way too when we add a new item let's do test item four in this case and then we want to add that in here we'll get rid of that we don't need that item we're going to give it a category test category and then available yes give it some unit unit give it a barcode here and some prices here and inventory value reorder point okay so now we've got that let's give it an image too it's also we can easily recognize it so what i want to do now is i want to I want to take this information and bring it now we know it's going to be saved right here in our inventory data but i also want to bring it into our local file so when we save that item it's also going to go to our local it's also going to run a macro called what is that macro it's going to be called update remote how do i know that because up here in our item local macro if we look at here under our save remember we just ran the save macro we have something called update remote this macro is going to update the remote file so when we update the remote what is it going to do it's going to take the information we just put in it's going to put it right here inside this workbook 
Once it's inside this workup, test item four, then it can be visible on the remote application on your phone, as long as it's there. So again, once we take our remote here, it's not here yet, once we refresh it, we're gonna see test item four with that clock icon is gonna show up because it's all synced in our drop box. So now all we need to do is scroll down here and we see that the item here, test item four, has been added to your phone or to the application. Okay, so we've got that. So that's another macro, it's called update remote. Let's go through that macro and now go in here under here and click on update remote. So this, all we're doing is we're gonna do, basically take information from our inventory data and update our remote. So it's basically the opposite of what we just did. Pretty much the same thing, except opposite. Invoice data workbook at path, invoice data path, all the same, everything's the same. We're opening up our remote workbook, but this time all we're taking is our remote, a remote database. We're gonna take that in the last row and it's gonna equal our local. So we're taking our local and updating the remote. This line of code is pretty much the only line of difference except the last row of data we're gonna use sheet two. This is our local copy, right? Sheet two is a local. So, and then what we wanna do is I wanna update the invoice data and close it and save it. True means save. So we're gonna close it because we did make a change to our remote. Remember, this is our remote here. This is our remote. We did make a change, so we need to close it and save it. So we can do that with this line of code. And again, once again, I wanna update. I wanna make sure that the sync is updated. B5 equals now. That's gonna set the last update time to the current date. Again, that's gonna set it so we know that the update's been done. Everything is synced. Now it's changed to 2.41 p.m. So that is how we do it. That is how we create a mobile manager with AppSheet. Now, AppSheet itself has a ton of features. I didn't go into this. There's a ton of great features. I am learning it myself, how to create, how to create tons of applications. I am going to go through it. Have a look at this. Let me know what else you want me to see. I really love this. I'd like to explore more. I want to see how we can do more with Excel and AppSheet working together. So have a look at it. Your feedback is going to really help me. And I'm going to base that feedback on how what other training videos that I create, if any, on using AppSheet. So really in this particular one, I really need your comments, whether you're on Facebook, YouTube, or any other application that you're viewing this, go ahead and let me know in the comments below. That's really going to help us. Thanks again so much for joining us, and we'll see you next week. Have a great one. Mm -hmm.